To design high-end luxury architecture takes decades to master, but it only takes a little while to learn with the right teacher. Today, I wanna to share with you exactly how I created this beautiful architectural duplex in a matter of moments. So as you can see, I always start with the garage itself. The garage is one of the largest elements within the site, especially on these smaller sites. They're quite tight and claustrophobic. After that, I like to position my lifts, my stairs, and my key core criteria in the building. In this scenario, I've already sketched everything out, so I know what I'm doing in what particular order. It wouldn't always be this straightforward and this logical if you're actually trying to design it from scratch. However, I knew that my lift core and my stairwell had to go directly behind the garage in order to be able to line up perfectly on the next floor. In this scenario, there was two basic bedrooms downstairs, an entire ensuite that was a little bit more upmarket. Now, personally, I hate the standard two by two ensuites. If I can and where I can, I like to design them a little bit more premium, a little bit more luxury, concealed toilet and shower behind and a bath in front. Now, unfortunately, in this design, there was absolutely no space for a window. There was no skylight available to me because there was an entire floor above, so we just went with it. The master bedroom pod in itself, taken from another project because it perfectly blended into this design. It was a grand, grand master bedroom. Not only did you have a full open walk-in robe, but you had a full concept open bedroom, including a bathroom, toilet, a shower, and of course a sauna in the middle. After that, I always like to indicate some sort of floor coverings to break up the bland, monotonous space on the floor plan itself. So adding 2D textures for the rugs can really help soften individual spaces. Moving to the upper floor, it's important that we try to align our upper floors with our lower floors. This helps with general structural integrity and also reduces the overall cost of the project. Now look, you don't have to align any of your floors. You can cantilever across, you can pull back in, you can do all sorts of things depending on your budget. But of course, it's gonna be significantly cheaper and significantly easier for people to align walls on site. So as architects and designers, we really have to be conscious of our designs, yes, for budget purposes, but we also really wanna be conscious of our designs for the people that are gonna be building these things on site. You don't want somebody hanging off a 10 story cliff trying to fix one bolt that you forgot to design properly. So we really wanna think about it in detail. Upstairs, it was a very similar scenario to downstairs. We had our entry portal, we had a small little study nook, a secondary master upstairs and a small seating area. That is before we entered the heart of the home, the main viewing vista. Now in this scenario, there was beautiful ocean views in the background, so we wanted to focus most of our elements towards the rear of the property. Hence, while you'll see later in the design, the front is completely private. Now, what I was trying to avoid is numerous hallways in the upper floor. I didn't want too much wasted space. Now, in front of the lift and in front of the staircase, it's okay, you know, they're active landings. Whereas the kitchen in itself, I didn't want it to be overly large. I didn't want the dining and living to be wasted space. So I pulled the back, I refined it, and I managed to actually make it a multifunctional area. In this scenario, kitchen, living, dining, of course, is fantastic, but also you get the luxury and space of a pool table. Now you can see I toyed with multiple ideas of having different configurations, pool tables with low balustrades, internal walls, all sorts of things before I finally landed on a more basic floor plan. For me personally, it's nice to have an indoor outdoor connection even when you're living on the upper floor. So a staircase concealed behind a wall completely tucked away is a nice little addition to the balcony. It allows you to go outside, immediately enjoy that fresh air, but then further take the experience and traverse it down to the ground floor.
Now, when it came to actually designing the levels, the driveways, and the facade of this building, it was a little bit challenging because the front of the house and the floor plan was, well, challenging in itself. It was quite tedious and boring at the front. There was curves and elements that played on the form and the function as you entered, but the ability to place windows and nice architectural features at the front just weren't doing it for me. So as I started playing with the staircase and the entry design on the sloping side, of course, it came to my realization that the facade needed a lot more work from the additional architectural features, not the building itself. So I started to introduce cascading planters along the side of the driveway. Further to the cascading planters, I thought it would be nice to have a screened batten fence. Now, north is at the front of this building, so we're gonna get a ton of natural light flooding into the front of the facade. But it's also the street. It's interacting with the public realm. And it's not a very pleasant public realm because there's not much happening besides cars, traffic, and noise. So I really wanted to make sure it felt even more private than it already was. Hence, the batten facade. Now, the portal entry is just an overwhelming statement to indicate this is where you're coming into the building. Of course, with an underground garage that takes up the majority of the facade, it is nice to have that obvious presence of you are directed here, you need to meander here. And as I continue to go through this, I wasn't paying particular attention to the setbacks because there was plenty of space and I didn't take into account any of the driveways at the start. So I had to push the whole building back. It is something that you have to take in mind during the early design stage. If your cars aren't able to get down the driveway, then something's gone wrong. You need to be able to go down. It doesn't matter if it's in a Bentley, if it's in a Ferrari, or if it's in a Hyundai. It doesn't matter how small your clearance is, you need to be able to get down that driveway. And if that means moving the house around, adjusting it to make it work, then you have to do that because the last thing you wanna do is design a driveway where you bottom out and can't go in and out of your own garage. As you can see, I continue to play and tweak with this facade even longer. It just wasn't sitting right for me, no matter what I did and how I played with it. Once I doubled the duplex design and placed them side by side, I was able to get a better understanding of what the facade would look like in real life with two duplexes in full 3D. Now, full disclosure, this is probably the slowest way I could have done a duplex. I should have created a module, flipped it over and done it that way. But for some reason, I decided to just copy and paste for this video. So if you're learning iCAD along the way with this time lapse as a guide, please don't do it that way. You really want to create your own modules. But as you can see, now that we have two architectural features in front of us, it got a little bit bland and a little bit boring. So the batten screen needed to come off and be completely redesigned. The fact that there were some subtle curves inside allowed me to use that same design language at the front. Purposely sloping, curving, and hugging the building in this screened batten facade. But what was lacking from obviously the battens was a nice architectural elegant feature at the top and the bottom. Obviously, you have to secure this batten screen somehow, and that is either done completely discreetly or with the bottom flanges exposed. So the top and the bottom are completely exposed and they add it to the architecture. They ground and provide a head to this entire front screen. And because we aren't cantilevering too far over the garage, I decided to completely take out that dividing wall, lower it as far as I can to ensure this house looked like one seamless design, even though that batten screen was completely separate. These two houses do not touch, they're not connected, they're completely green tidal, 
but from a presence and from a straight view, it looks incredibly powerful and it looks like a multi-million dollar design. Now on multi-million dollar designs, of course, you want your entries to be amazing. So a little bit more time, a little bit more thought, a bit care was taken into those entry portal designs. For the purpose of this, 1A and 1B is completely fine, but in real life, I would have started to brand these buildings. Now, with most of the modeling done, it's time to take it into Twin Motion. Now, Twin Motion is my preferred for things like this because I have a full library of beautiful plants from Globe Plants. I can use Enscape if I wanted to as well, but I've set up so many templates for Twin Motion, it's quicker and easier for me to do it this way for this particular project. As you can see, I always set up my media first. That way, I can easily make sure everything is perfectly aligned. After that, all of my camera settings are adjusted, made sure that my ambience is correct, my sun, my flares, and everything in between. That way when I go to create the second, third, fourth, fifth, or 100th revision of that same image, it is super easy. Grass is one of the most important things that you have to get right in a 3D render. It doesn't matter if it takes you significantly longer than any other part of the project to get your grass right. Spend some time, paint it in, adjust the settings absolutely perfectly. In Australia, grass is typically a little bit darker than normal. And we have some beautiful spring flowers. We're in the heart of winter at the moment, as you can tell. So I'm missing spring and I'm missing summer just a little bit, hence the beautiful spring flowers. They also add a little bit more of a touch of character to this design and a little bit more life to the overall render. Second to the grass, one of the most important elements is of course our textures and our plants. The stone wall in the middle is one of the elements I wasn't particularly proud of in the end of this render. It was a little bit lacklustre, it was a lacking detail it didn't have enough flair and something was just wrong so in another video in another time i would have spent a little bit more effort and a little bit more time on the stone cladding itself however using all the plants from globe plants really brought this render fully to life it does take a little bit of time to import into the project when you're trying to import some of the larger assets but eventually they do load in and once they're in, they're quite easy to use and manipulate. Now, as you can see, they're incredibly well detailed, incredibly high quality and just add to the overall sense of the design. Personally, when I'm doing duplex designs, the one thing I hate to see is completely mirrored landscaping. Now, it's quicker, it's easier, it's so much less of a challenge than duplicating and creating things twice, you just copy and paste. But even when I do that, I just like to adjust things ever so slightly so they don't look 100% identical. So whenever I'm doing duplex designs, yes, I'll go through copy and paste, but yes, I'll always delete a few, replace a few, just to make them look slightly different. The more depth, the more variety, the more textures, the more diversity in plant species you can add to your render will always give more life. So even though this particular render maybe had 10 or 15 different species, it had them in all sorts of different shapes, sizes and colors, which really gave the overall finish a realistic look.
In Australia, the grass tree is one of the most iconic trees and it is either loved or hated. However, the grass tree is very symbolic and I love adding it into my renders. It was one of the first trees I bought from Globe Plants and it served me well every single day. As you can see, once I started to import some of these larger high poly models, my system did start to slow down. I'm running an M1 Ultra Mac Studio and I had to reduce it from ultra to high just in these final moments to really get everything perfectly lined up. After that, I always group all of my high poly plants into one folder, turn them off so I can fine tune the model. That means adding beautiful Porsches, adjusting the textures, adjusting the lighting and making sure it is perfect from every scene. Now, I love black and white cars. It is one of my personal favorites. So in most of my renders, you'll probably see a black and white car. If it's a Porsche, even better. I'd love one well out of my reach, but maybe one day you never know. Once everything is in, it's time to add all of the images that I want to export. Now, generally I look for 10 to 12 images from an external render so I could use them for content. This single project here will last a week of content. I have a love and passion for photography, so I know and understand some of the general basic concepts of photography. That really helps with setting up some of these scenes. If you're ever lost, look to architectural photography as inspiration. Sometimes it takes a little bit of manipulating and a little bit of playing around to get the absolute perfect photo. And even still, I go back to it time and time again, adjusting the lighting, adjusting the shadows, adjusting the rotation, just making sure it looks the absolute best it possibly can. After the image is complete, we do want to go and create a full video. Now, running these videos may take a little bit more power, you may have to reduce it again. But we want to be able to create a video, export it as one solid video and export it as parts as well. That way, we're able to utilize our media in multiple scenarios. We can use it as a sole video, as you'll see at the end of this project, or we can cut it up for reels. And there you have it. That is all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button and like always, I'll see you next week.